What's up guys, welcome to patch 1.0.4, or as I'm calling it, the re-release of Diablo 3. This patch pretty much fixes everything that was wrong with the game in the first place, and adds a whole lot of new things to do with the Paragon system. So I'm pretty much going to go down every single one of the patch notes, apart from class changes, as I don't really feel like I need to go over them, as I've been going over a lot before the patch. So let's just start with Paragon levels. After a player reaches level 60, killing monsters rewards experience. There are 100 Paragon levels, and each Paragon level rewards you with stats, 3% magic find and gold find. You also get a pretty sick border, I guess, every 10 levels. Um, in my opinion, this is amazing because it actually gives you a reason to sort of play other than item farming. And I will definitely be playing a lot more after the patch. And I'm probably going to end up going for level 100 Paragon, as sad as it is. So um, keep up with that. And I'll probably end up streaming this just to sort of relieve the boredom. So if you would like to see me grind to level 100 Paragon, which is going to take a long time. Uh, follow my Twitch TV at twitch.tv slash I'm going to skip the health regen because it doesn't really matter to me that much. Nephilim Valor now grants 15% bonus experience per stack, as well as 15% to magic find and gold find. So basically farming with 5 NV is going to be the most efficient way to sort of get experience. So you definitely want to have 5 stacks constantly. Magic find now caps at 300% and is no longer averaged among all players in the multiplayer game. Um, like I said before, really, I think this is a good change overall, and will mean having level 100 so you have 300% magic find will be great for you because it will never get reduced below the max from other players. These auction house changes are definitely a step in the right direction. Being able to cancel anything at any point, as long as that bids, is amazing, and being able to search for things out of 6 stats instead of 3 is also really beneficial. Minimum damage has been replaced with average damage. I think this is actually really useful because minimum damage was pretty not really used. So average damage can be used to find weapons of a certain DPS, which is really cool. Stat increases which come from slotted gems are no longer taken into account. I love this chain so much because personally trying to find items that were specific stats, but then finding things that had like life on hit gems in when I was trying to find a life on hit weapon was really, really annoying. So I think that's really cool. Maximum stack size of gold per listing has been increased from 100,000 to 1 million. Probably makes selling gold in the Real Money Auction House a bit easier because you can sort of change the prices below 0.25. So that's good. Um, the following message has been added, blah blah blah, you know, it's whatever. So that's pretty much it for the Auction House. As far as the Auction House changes go, I really, really think they're good. And will make it a lot more usable because I personally had a lot of problems with the Auction House. It was good, however, it just took too long to use efficiently. And it got in your way a lot of the time when being able to search for things like just the six stat thing, especially. If you could have done that from the start, it would have made finding items a shit ton easier. I don't really care about UI improvements, so I'm not going to go over them. Bug fixes are pretty important. Attack speed is now a searchable affix for covers. Really cool. Chance to blind on hit, pretty irrelevant. Items with level requirement reduced will now properly appear in search results. This is actually pretty big. Because if you were leveling a character, you obviously wanted a thing with reduced level requirement. However, you had to specifically search for it before, which a lot of people didn't realise. So they weren't getting the big weapons that helped them progress faster, because they were stuck with sort of 400 DPS weapons, for example, when they could have had a 900 DPS weapon. This last one, recommended items page for now display covers. Um, pretty sure no one uses recommended items anyway, so it's pretty pointless. All of these battle.net things are pretty non-mentionable, apart from quick join window has been improved. Hopefully it means everyone doesn't like sort of jump around because you're going to display three things at a time and it will make quick joining things a lot easier. Again, the chat things, I don't really want to go over them because they're really minor. Bug fixes, caused items on normal golden auction house to display any hardcore auction house. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. However, I'm glad it's fixed. Boss rooms have been standardized so that after boss fights are complete, players will always be able to do the following, use town portal and re-enter the room again. Um, yeah, why not? Some rooms having to run out and then reset was pretty annoying, so I'm glad this was changed. So they basically changed a lot of bosses again. Magda Insect Swarm can now be slowed. Gom, um, let's see. Rate which Gom spawn in glass card has been reduced by 20%. The cooldown has been increased. So basically, for those of you who saw my 1 million gold challenge of Gom, it was pretty impossible just due to the fact that there was too many gas clouds for the DPS I had. Pretty sure after this buff, or nerf even, sorry. It should actually be doable, and it won't be an absolutely stupid boss anymore, 
which I think is a good change. Cydia, players can no longer bypass the change that appear. So what? Asmodan, fireball projectiles can now be slowed. Pretty minor, but okay. Fix the bug where Israel's charge attack could damage players twice. Yeah, that was really, really annoying. I'm glad that's fixed. And fix the bug where Israel could become immune to damage when it's 30% health. I had this happen to me when I was farming the Staff of Herding plan, and it was super annoying because I just didn't know what to do. Rakanoth is now properly immune to crowd control effects when enraged in a further difficulty. Never had that problem, so not really sure. Dabla's bone case debuff will now properly be removed. Cool, because that was stupid. Fixed an issue where uh, triggering a phase transition while grasped by Diablo could cause both the player and Diablo to become temporarily invisible. Never had that happen. And the last one I didn't have happen either. A repair tab has been added to the blacksmith. Yeah, why not? Pretty cool. Gem combined designs for amethyst and emeralds that no longer contain typos. <laughs> okay. And the last follower player had active in a single player game will now be restored automatically after leaving a multiplayer game. Actually, this change sounds really small, but um, a lot of the time I played for like a good hour without a follower because I was just not realizing it wasn't there because I was used to it being there kind of thing after I left a multiplayer game. So glad that's changed because it helps stupid people like me. So onto the items. All of 60 to 62 damage affixes have had their minimum and maximum top and damage values increased. So if you have a lower level weapon that's not eye level 63, it should in theory have more damage, which is cool. So um, level 63 items are no longer the shit, and the only things you use, and 60 to 62 items could still be used. However, this will only impact items created or dropped after patch, so that's not what I said before, but okay. Two handed melee weapons can now roll their own affix for core stats. Core stat rollers have increased by 70%, but this does not affect two hundred range weapons, so no demon hunter super buffs. Plus crit damage, life on hit, life after kill can now roll up to 200% for two handed weapons. Jesus Christ, that's a lot. Doesn't affect range weapons again, but after noting this, it's all after patch 1.0.4, so don't get your hopes up that you're going to have some sick item. Um, all offhand items such as quivers, blah blah blah, can now roll dexterity, which is what I really care about, in the same ranges as armor and weapons. So, in theory, you're going to need a new quiver after the patch, maybe, which could suck. Offhands can now roll reduced level requirements, why not? Drop rate on quivers has been reduced, never really had a problem with it. Max fury, max spirit can no longer roll on range weapons, yeah. Max block, uh, Product costs have been reduced by up to 25% for items levels between 53 and 63. I thought they wanted people to pay more repair costs, but apparently not. Weapon racks have had their weapon drop restored to 100%. The weapons are more likely to be common, but you probably can still get greens and legendaries, I guess, which is. I meant blues and legendaries, sorry, god. The text color of gems, potions, crafting has been changed from white to light blue. Not really sure why that's changed because everyone is used to them being white now, but I guess it'll help them stand out against white items and stuff like that. The maximum stats of this gem has been increased from 30 to 100. The gem drops down effect is now more noticeable. So overall, it's just quality of life stuff, putting it simply. Everything basically here is pure quality of life and will just make the game more enjoyable to play. So different changes have been made to legendary items. That sounds cool when they say it like that. Custom proc effects been added to over 50 legendary items. So I mean, I guess we're going to see them in the game when they sort of come out, because they haven't released everything yet, as far as I'm aware. Um, all legendary items will now roll at least one of them to ensure DPS is viable. Yeah, it's really cool. It makes legendaries actually decent. Uh, let's see. It's pretty. Legendary items based on uniques from previous Diablo games have received a tuning pass to make their stats more effective. Hopefully the Wind Force is a sick bow and it's like best in slot because I really like the Ablin item in Diablo 2 so I hope it kind of lives up to its former glory. All 61 item pieces have been increased to 63. Why not? This means you're going to have to new buy new things I guess. Summon creatures summoned by legendary item proc should now follow the player. I haven't really seen them so not really sure what they did before. 
And again, they only apply to things after 1.0.4, so pretty likely. Um, the hidden camp. I'm obviously terrible at this game because I have no idea what the last part means. If someone wants to tell me in the comments, please let me know because I'm just too dumb. Legendary items pre and post 1.0.4 with the plus attack speed affix should now work correctly. Any of you who have been following me for more than like a couple of weeks know how mad I got at attack speed being bugged because I had two items that I spent millions on just to find out they were bugged. I can finally use them again. <laughs> Makes me so happy. Items with plus chance to stun now have the suffix of staggering instead of devastation, whatever. Multiple chests that have a small chance of dropping loot in unreachable locations have been repositioned slightly to prevent this from happening. Just random bugs, I guess. Um, all of this is kind of boring stuff. Monsters across the game have had a pass to make their experience and loot rewards more proportional to the effect required to kill them. Imps and Tomatoes Stingers grant less experience, but Lacuna Warriors, which are insane, grant increased its speed and items. Increased experience by 60%. Um, four times the loot drop, went over this before, quite a lot. Bonus health granted to monsters and corp has been reduced to 75%. Normal, no change. Inferno, 105% to 75%. So, basically, the more players you have, the quicker, in theory, if everyone's the same geared, you should kill things. Right, let's go over this one. Act 1, elite monster health reduced by 11%. Why not? Act 2, normal monster health increased by 4%, elite monster health reduced by 8%, overall damage done by all monsters reduced by 8%. Normal monster health increased by 10% in Act 3 and 4, elite monster reduced by 2.5, overall damage done by all monsters reduced by 15%. Don't want to say it again, but is that honestly necessary? But I'm not going to complain, I'm going to stick it out. <laughs> and be a tanky demon hunter because 15% more damage reduction is about what I needed to actually make it properly viable so it's cool for me I guess bunch of nerfs to basically every mob in the game that I can see I'm not going to go over every, over every single one of them because there's just too many um, the first and third levels of Garrick's dungeon now have a total of 5 uniques that can be spawned that's pretty cool, I'm going to go see that Reduce the chance of a skeletal rare pack to spawn in the cemetery forsaken from 50 to 20 percent. That makes farming five stacks before whimsy shit a little bit harder, but it doesn't really matter. The treasure goblin spawn has been removed from the road to Alcunas. Have fun, hardcore goblin farmers. Although let's be honest, it's been how long now? Close to three months, and it's, they've only just removed it, so they obviously didn't care about it that much. I'm glad it's gone though, because the less goblin farming and things like that we can get in the game, the better overall. Champion and rare monsters will no longer enrage after prolonged combat, and they will no longer heal to full health after not being engaged. Like I said in the last video, I like it. Not really, because it makes everything easier. However, if I'm going to farm to level 100 Paragon, you better bet I like that change, because it's going to make my life easier. So, I'm one of them guys now. Jayla can no longer be appearing with knockback Nightmare or Vortex. That's cool, because Nightmare Jailers were pretty annoying. Invulnerable minions have been removed. Fuck yes! That makes me so fucking happy. That was like the downfall of my Diablo career. And now that's gone, I'm really, really happy about it. Fire chains damage is reduced to 20%. Didn't really have much to do with it because I'm a demon hunter. Nightmare Monsters will now make players immune to fear for 6 seconds after the fear is cast on the player. Sick change, because Chain Nightmare was a fucking problem. And that's gone, so cool. Uh, whatever, pets and followers don't really care. Shielded Monsters are no longer shield if they are the last monster in the area, and only one monster in a given pack can be shielded at a time. Again, really fucking good change, because shielding was a joke. If all four of them shielded at the same time, it might as well have been vulnerable minions. So, really, really, really good change. The spawn points of arcane enchanted beams have been adjusted slightly to be more spread out, and damage reduced by 30%. You did get some random ones, I guess, so that's probably fixing them. Champion and rare fallen lunatics have been removed. 
yeah, they were <laughs> really stupid. Soul Monsters will now have a more pronounced champion of rare appearance. That's great because I know quite a few guys who died in hardcore because they didn't realize they were champions until you hover your mouse over them, and by then they were frozen super fast, blah blah blah, and it just kind of died to them. So, cool change. A lot of these bug fixes are actually pretty important to the game, so Mortal Monster Projectiles should no longer be on within the monster's dead zone, so now you can actually dead zone mortals again. Good change. Water monsters can no longer spawn walls on top of players. Thank god, because it was really stupid when that happened. Um, played Arcan Enchanted no longer have resistance to their things respectively. Um, what else is interesting? Oppressor's charge attack no longer deals damage to players twice, so no longer we die to every oppressor you see because they do too much damage. Berserkers now have proper blue glow. Cool. Um, what else? The aspect of terror will now drop at least one blue item, and its clones will now only drop health orbs. Hmm, that can make farming that possibly useful again. That's pretty interesting. It should now be significantly easier to dodge Triumph Berserker's power hits. Cool. Carl will be happy about that. He dies to them a lot. Um, player who is killed by a monster's reflect damage FX will now be able to release his or her corpse and be, res uh, be resurrected by other players. They thought you could do that anyway. Okay. Fix the bug that allowed monitors and multiple affixes to sometimes ignore the cooldown timers of these powers. Yeah, had that happen to me a couple of times, it was pretty stupid. Players will now receive full experience and gold awards for completing quests the first time in Nightmare, Hell and Inferno. I guess that just makes you level up a bit quicker, so that's cool. Players will no longer receive a quest reward after opening the entrance to the Waterlog Passage. Instead, they will now receive the reward after completing the step Kill Gavin the Thief. That's just a nerf, a XP farming method that was pretty slow, how people did use it, so that's a little nerf to that. This again is a slightly long one. Um, players will no longer receive Town Portal as a reward during repeated completions of the quest, a Shattered Crown, Tilt Skeleton's Crown, and will now receive Golden Experience. That could possibly make that a um, farming spot for experience, I'm not really sure how that's going to turn out. Be wary of that and try it out. Um, they're really boring bug fixes. The ability to drag and drop skills in elective mode will now only be enabled while the skill window is open. Thank fuck. Um, I had quite a few friends that used to drag skills off bars and reset their 5 stacks. Never really knew how they managed to do that, but they did it obviously, so you can no longer do that, which is cool. Uh, a 2 second delay will now occur when kicking accept in a trade window. If either player has made any changes, just means you can't scam as much. Hold and control while mousing over an item on the ground will no longer cause the item to appear unsocketed, and players will no longer, no longer get disconnected from the game if their mouse wheel is bound to function close or open windows. That's pretty interesting. And right, basically the only class change I'm going to go over here is Jagged Spikes can no longer trigger procs. This makes my Cydia method of killing it with the 1 million gold challenge pretty much impossible now because I completely rely on life on hit procking from Jagged Spikes. So, yeah, interesting change. Glad I don't really need to cross it here again, because it was hard enough as it was. Final thoughts to the patch. People really need to stop bitching about the Paragon system. I really don't care that your MF gear that you've spent all these millions of gold on is being changed and is losing a bit of its worth. Because at the end of the day, this is for the game's health and it's going to make the game better overall because you have a reason to play the game that's not just items. So stop bitching about the Paragon system please. It's a good system and yeah. Overall, if any of you actually listened this far, thanks for watching my videos and subscribe to my channel. However, I guess if you've watched this far, you're probably already subscribed to my channel. So um, yeah. Look forward to a lot of Paragon videos, I guess, coming out in the future, now that I'm back playing Diablo, because there's actually a reason to play it again. And thanks for watching.